Hello and welcome to the show that debates, deconstructs and demystifies burning issues that affect the country. This is The Big Picture and I'm Athar Khan. All is not quiet on the Western Front as trouble and turmoil seems to be brewing in India's backyard. The Pakistani Prime Minister fired his government's Defence Secretary on Wednesday in a dispute over a memo sent to Washington that has enraged the army, escalating a crisis, pitting the civilian government against the powerful military leadership. The official in question was considered to be a bridge between the civilian government and the all-powerful military establishment in the country and was also seen as Ashfaq Kiani's man. The army warned darkly of grievous consequences as a result of the standoff, sending a clear signal that the army is mobilizing support as well. In a move that has fueled speculation while within Pakistan, the army announced it had appointed a new commander for the 111 Brigade or the 111th Brigade, which is responsible for security in Islamabad and Rawalpindi and has in the past carried out coups. Although the army said that the posting was part of a routine rotation, analysts are drawing parallels with the order in which the exact same developments led to the ouster and ultimately the exile of Nawaz Sharif in 1999. Tonight on The Big Picture, we analyze this developing story and try and understand what exactly is in store for Pakistan. We'll also debate whether India and the rest of the world should be preparing to deal with the military establishment in Pakistan yet again. Joining me in the studio is an eminent panel, Vinod Sharma, political editor, Hindustan Times. Uh, on his left, Major General retired Deepankar Banerjee, uh, who heads a think tank in Delhi, also founder and chairman of the same think tank. Uh, Professor Pushpesh Panth is with SIS uh, in JNU. Also joining us on the program uh, will be uh, Professor Najib Jung, Vice Chancellor, Jamia Millia Islamia. I'd like to start the show, however, uh, with uh, Mr. Vinod Sharma. Sir, on Wednesday, he fired Naeem Lodi. Then just minutes after the strongly worded statement that the army came out with, um, the 111 Brigade got a new chief. Was this a crisis that, that was really waiting to happen? Was it a matter of time before these... Uh, the establishment, military establishment and the civilian leadership collided head on. Well, frankly, to be honest to you, sometimes I feel that uh, much of the analysis that is done in Delhi is based on hearsay and much of what is said uh, in Pakistan is based on a whole lot of conspiracy theories. The reality is that the crisis between the army and the civilian leadership is there. But it, it isn't a bigger crisis than the crisis that could happen and is in the process of happening between the Supreme Court and the civilian leadership. And I think that we'll get to know which direction this crisis is taking on the 16th when the full bench meets uh, to, uh, to consider uh, a smaller benches, uh, three, six point formula for the government with regard to uh, the NRO, which has been held as uh, extra constitutional uh, some years back. And with regard to that, the government was supposed to take some action which it hasn't taken. Uh, and the court's uh, argument is that uh, by the statements, most notably what the president said a couple of days back in a television interview, uh, that if he were to ask the Swiss authorities to reopen the probe, it will amount to uh, putting the late Benazir Bhutto on trial and his party is not willing to accept that. Right, right. So the Supreme Court says that you have placed uh, uh, the party above the constitution mm. and uh, you are duty bound to follow the constitution you have sworn uh, you, have all, you owe allegiance to the constitution you took an oath under the constitution the right. same problem is there with the prime minister uh, I think that uh, in this case in relative terms the prime minister is more accountable because under the 18th amendment of the constitution all the powers that were vested in the presidency stand transferred to right, the prime right. minister and any executive action uh, arising out of the court's uh, order had to be taken by the prime right, minister right. Fair, fair, fair point let me go quickly across to uh, professor jung professor jung if i could ask you this uh, vinod sharma mentioned uh, the supreme court of pakistan nawaz sharif has been saying that the sc must intervene now is a change at the helm of Pakistan right now suitable uh, for India and especially what, what are the ramifications for the rest of the world if a change does happen? Athar, I don't really know if anybody can guess what's happening in Pakistan over the last four or five months. I believe this is exactly a scenario which started in Iran after Ayatollah Khomeini had passed away. Uh, and when Rafsanjani became president, Till now, nobody knows who is in power in uh, Iran. You have the supreme leader, uh, you have a president, you have a speaker, you have a parliament, 
and anybody can do anybody else's decision. So this is exactly what we've been seeing in Pakistan. You have a civilian government, you have an army. Uh, obviously the civil, civilian government was very disturbed when uh, Osama bin Laden was found in Pakistan. It is obvious that uh, the army knew where he was. Uh, I also believe the army gave him relative protection. Now the joker in the pack is the Supreme Court. That uh, I think Justice Iftikhar Chaudhary believes that he can run the country. And really, uh, whether he will dismiss this government? Uh, uh, like I was overhearing a conversation before the show started that Vinod said that uh, a coup is ruled out. Now, I think there's a lot of posturing here. Uh, the army is there posturing away, changing the brigade commander, which is a very serious thing. The government postures, uh, removing the defense secretary, uh, who was friendly to the army. Uh, President Zardari, till an hour ago, who was there, has now fled to Dubai. So what's happening? Who knows? And therefore, to that extent, to conjecture right now, I think it's premature. We wait. Right, we wait right. till the 16th, as Vinod says. Right, Professor Jung, let me, let me just get happens. in. Let me just interrupt you there and get in, Professor Pant here. Uh, Vinod mentioned, as well as Professor Jung, that uh, there, there, are, there are so many people in the mix with the Joker being the Supreme Court, the Joker in the pack being the Supreme Court. If the Khargilani has a big ego, Ishfaq Yani probably a, even a bigger ego, is this ultimately then a clash of egos rather than a clash of uh, No, I think what Professor uh, Jung said is uh, very, very relevant. There's a lot of posturing going on. It's not just a clash of egos. There are more substantial stakes than egos. And I think what Vinod said is, again, very interesting that whether we treat this as a crisis which concerns our immediate attention and has to be put on the urgency priority number one, I think is I don't agree at all. I do think that whatever is happening in Pakistan does concern us. But what the civilian military relationships there are, we have lived with them for the past six decades and more. I mean, I, I have a slight disagreement with Professor Jung where he says nobody knows who's in power. Uh, I mean, I think we reasonably know that Zadari and Gilani Saab are not exactly in power. They have been, as we know, mentioned, uh, discredited quite substantially by the Supreme Court comments. Time and again. And I do not think that they have a mass base, even of the kind which Imran Khan has, or the charisma which uh, Benazir had, so to speak. So I think they are not really powerful. I mean, and the army always causes the shots when the chips are down. So the government of India and the rest of the world knows whether they shelter Osama bin Laden or not is their point. But the Americans will also learn to live. They have learned to live with army or whichever general is in power. So have we. We'll talk about America also, but I want to get uh, Major General Deepankar Banerjee in, get a defense perspective of the matter. Uh, a very direct question. Vinod Sharma rules out any possibility of a coup in Pakistan. Do you agree with him? And if no, then why? Well, the question in Pakistan right now is that, as in the past, the military has been a dominant force in Pakistan's domestic internal affairs. And uh, compared to the civil leadership, political leadership, and the military, the military has enjoyed a higher uh, influence and power in the country. Always, always. As always, historically in Pakistan. The new factor in Pakistan today is that the Supreme Court has intervened and has emerged as a third pole or a third principal factor in the whole equation. How the Supreme Court decides on a number of issues will perhaps determine the current crisis. But as far as the army is concerned, and the army's strategic and international requirements and interests have always been safeguarded by the political leadership. And that is the sort of a minimal point at which both sides agree, that army's requirements will be safeguarded, and then for a certain time, the civilian leadership may or may not be allowed to rule the country so far so-called. So to your direct question, my view is that no, under the present circumstances, the army is not right, fair likely point. to uh, play a role in... Uh, fair point, fair point. <clears throat> Let me come back to Vinod Sharma and ask you, sir, um, just this happening, just before this crisis escalated, what had happened was there were talk about uh, the PPP and the PMLN might, going for a, might be going for a, uh, a you know, an exchange, sort of, so to say, because Imran Khan was holding rallies in Karachi and in, in Lahore, uh, and they were freaked out that he might actually, you know, uh, come up, become the dark horse. Now, after this crisis has escalated, do you think the polit politician, the political establishment, will stay together, join forces together, or be torn apart, and in fact, you know, make Kiani even stronger than he is right now? Make no mistake, uh, the commitment of the political leadership of that country collectively is against any military intervention. 
the commitment of Iftikhar Chaudhary is on many times against any military intervention. And if Mr. Kayani, whom I don't rate as a very powerful army chief, especially after he got a three-year extension from this government, uh, if he intervenes, I think that will lead to the isolation of the army. And the army requires a civilian interface today to face the kind of myriad problems that country has. And nobody really wants to get into the driver's seat. Uh, they would rather like to control things from behind. This is point number one. Point number two, uh, whether the army can stage a coup. Now, intervention, this will lead, this scenario will be after if there is an intervention, the political leadership, the polit politi political class would get together and fight that. Mm. Army cannot intervene in my view, and I may be wrong, because the army today is not the kind of the army that we have known in Pakistan all these years. This is an army, mind you, where, as I said, the chief is not hugely popular because uh, his three-year extension, which will outlast the presidency and also the tenure of the government, has uh, led to some resentment in the top ranks of... Uh, we'll discuss uh, that. Uh, top ranks. We'll discuss that in full detail, but uh. we have to go take a short break right now. Uh, lots more to come. We'll go to Professor Jung as well after the break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Picture. We'll continue where we left off. Uh, Mr. Vinod Sharma, uh, you, you wanted to make a point before the break. You know, but I said that the army chief is on extension, so thereby is not a very popular entity. Second point, that in the middle ranks and in the lower ranks, there has been an evidence of infiltration by uh, extreme right-wing groups. I mean, if you call them terrorists, yes, of course. And it was very evident from uh, the terrorist raid on the Mehran naval base. Mm and the Shahzad case, the journalist Shahzad's case, you know. That is the point number two. Mm. Point number three is that <clears throat> until now, post Osama, post Abbottabad, Abbottabad was the nadir of the Pakistan army. It was as bad, according to some commentators and my friends in Pakistan, as was 1971. So the credibility was, as, was damaged. It was, it was as bad. Thereafter, happened the, uh, the, the US airstrike which caused the death of two dozen Pakistani soldiers. Now, Memogate is what? Memogate is essentially an attempt by the army establishment to show the civilian leadership as a bigger adjunct of the US interest in Pakistan than the army itself. While the fact is that it was under the army's rule, it was under Musharraf, that the drone, drone strikes were permitted right. uh, by the US uh, in, inside the Pakistani territory. Right. You, you so, I mean, I mean, here is a situation where the army does not enjoy the kind of credibility it had in the past at the expense of an unpopular leadership. And that is where the whole problem lies. They can't right. intervene. Right, Mr. Shama, fair point, fair point. I'd like to go back to, uh, to Professor Jung for one second and, and go back to the civilian government. Now, analysts have said that uh, General Ishfaq Yani is, and so did uh, Mr. Vinod Sharma, he's not as uh, powerful a general as, as previous generals have been. Uh, he might have little appetite for a coup, but do you think that his generals who work under him uh, will probably be happy if the Supreme Court does uh, uh, dismiss this government by constitutional means? I think what the army will do with the help of the Supreme Court is what can be called a soft coup, which is nudge the government out, maybe have an election. We don't know who comes in. In all likelihood, it will not be the pair of Gilani and, uh, and Zardari. And therefore, you get a government of a little more convenience to yourselves. The government in its present shape, I do not see continuing. It's impossible for Zardari, Gilani and co to continue. Kayani may not be as strong a general as, say, Musharraf was. But do not remember that the, do remember that the army in, in Pakistan is like a company. They have too many business interests. And therefore, they stick together. Weak or strong, the army will always back the general. 
Musharraf superseded 11 generals. Nobody said a word. So, Kayani will stay. This present government must necessarily go because it can't survive this crisis. The following government would be, that would be to the mutual convenience of the army and the Supreme Court, even if it is elected by the people. Uh, somebody mentioned Imran Khan. Uh, I only want to say that this is an untested commodity. Let's not forget that 10 years ago, Imran contested 10 seats for himself and lost all. So whether he will come to power, whether he will get 80, 90 seats, nobody knows. Again, he's like a joker there. But we certainly know that the PPP is a party which is a powerful party. They will have a presence there. Right, right. Uh, Jan, let me... Nawaz Sharif is certainly a proven commodity. He will have a presence there. Right, so, right. So uh, it will be a coalition government as is the current one. Right, right. Professor Jung, let me, let me just quickly go across to Professor Pant and get his view on this. I'd like to talk about America and the influence it exerts over the Pakistani army. All three coup in the recent, uh, coups in the recent past have had U.S. support uh, slash approval, tacit or otherwise. Now, uh, my question to you, sir, uh, is maybe this time around, uh, because of Kiani's Chinese whispers, do you think that he dare to go ahead with, even without U.S. approval? Martin E. Dempsey, uh, the defense spokesman, spokesperson of the U.S., has said that they haven't sought any assurances on a non-coup policy and they haven't got any either. Before I respond to that, I think uh, Professor Jung was making a very interesting point that all of us are talking about a coup in Pakistan and what he mentioned is a soft coup. And I think, you know, Vinod made some very interesting points about the lack of credibility of the Pakistani army or the popularity or the absence thereof of uh, General Kayani. I think for a military dictator or military which is powerful or a habit of ruling, as Professor Jung said, with extensive business interest, the popularity with the people doesn't really make a difference. What makes a difference is the popularity with fellow officers. Now, I think there can be another kind of a coup scenario which one could speculate about. It was open season for that, <laughs> that there would be a coup against Kayani the people who's, uh, who have been superseded, who may still be in a position to guarantee the security and prosperity of fellow officers' business interests, but remove the present CEO. There right. could be a change in the boardroom of the army, so to speak, right. which I think is very interesting. And to responding to your question directly, I think, again, for the perspective which Professor Jung has provided, is immensely useful. Are the Americans not already in the no of a soft coup scenario? And we talk a lot about ISI in this country, but we don't have the stomach to talk about the CIA. I mean, the ISI, the Pakistani army, and the murder of democracy in Pakistan ever since independence and partition has been a enterprise, right. if I may say so, right. of the invisible government which Victor Mashidi talked about in America. Right, so right. maybe maybe the Americans are, I mean, I, I don't take too much, uh, give too much credence to the Chinese whispers, because we in this country do not take even Chinese incursions across our borders seriously. We think we should put them on the back burner, right, right. regardless of what our generals fair say. Fair point, fair point. Uh, General Dipanka Banerjee, we had a guest on the show last week, uh, and, and he said that uh, Imran Khan was most probably the B team of the army. Now. Professor Pan talked about a soft coup. Do you think the soft coup could come in, in the form of a B team playing for, uh, from, for GOC headquarters? Ah, that's a very interesting situation. But I think the reality today is that uh, in the Pakistan military, irrespective of whatever positions Kiani may or may not have taken, but given the institutional structure of a large organization like traditional uh, Pakistan military, the head of that organization has immense power, influence, and control. So coup against Kiani is unlikely. The situation really is, and therefore, the core commanders, the 10 of them, including the vice chief, who are the influential decision making, who form a consortium, and without whose concurrence, the chief does not move. And uh, soon enough, there will be a conference of the core commanders who will give whatever directions that uh, Kiani wants. The soft coup is a reality. Political elements get weakened, Whoever else comes to power will have to accept the national security line of the Pakistan military. The judiciary has become important and they will play a role in determining some parts of the outcome that emerges out of this. Let us not undermine the role of the Chinese uh, influence here. America's role of the past has now been taken over by China. So whenever anything goes wrong, the chief or the president or the prime minister, the first place they run to, no longer Washington, to but to Beijing. Yeah. And so therefore, it is important. American uh, government is extremely unhappy with Kayani. Unhappy, and of course, they have no faith in the civil administration there. Right, right. The whole uh, line of communication, 
supply route to Afghanistan having been disrupted and prevented for such a long time has really deeply upset America. Right, Rajal, we'll talk about more uh, after the short break. We'll take another short, small break. We'll talk about other issues that, uh, that are affecting this escalation of the crisis. Did uh, Gilani and his government shoot uh, itself in the foot? We'll talk about all of that after this short break. Welcome back. You're still with The Big Picture. Mr. Vinod Sharma, very quickly, very briefly, if you could, where does Musharraf fit into all this? Mm -hmm. like, like Professor Jung said, there are lo lots of jokers in the pack. Is he also a joker in the pack? Might take advantage of this chaos in Pakistan and make a comeback he's always wanted to make? You see, Musharraf was a general of the choice of the United States, and the United States is not a popular entity in Pakistan today. And I beg to disagree with uh, Professor Jung when he says that the army in a, is in a position to uh, install a government of its choice through the election mode. I don't think so because uh, you see the political right in Pakistan, there is a turf war going on between Imran Khan and the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz. And the political left in Pakistan is still with the PPP. They have their own version of Manrega, which helped them win elections in POK despite being hugely unpopular uh, in mainland uh, uh, Pakistan. So that is point number one. Point number two is that the, for the, the judiciary, the judiciary, Iftikhar Chaudhary lacks a chemistry with Zardari, it's well known. The memo gate was sought to be sorted out, which was, which was being sorted out because I heard Najam Sethi in his program on Geo TV uh, just uh, this morning, uh, it was being sorted out when Mr. Nawaz Sharif moved that petition in right. the court right, right. and the court intervened in the whole memo gate affair now that led to a lot of complications right, right. and the forge will not like to see mr nawaz sharif having any important role in any new dispensation because nawaz sharif is immensely popular with the rank and file of the forge but not with the leadership right. because of its very strident anti army position right. insofar as military intervention is right. concerned mr Shah, we'll give a chance uh, to mr to professor jung to respond to that professor jung very briefly if you could uh, mr vinod sharma seems to think that uh, the army is not in a position to actually uh, install a government of its choice uh, do you agree with that and if not then why very briefly if you could sir no it's anybody's guess who is in a position who is not in a position my content was only this that it will be a general nudging, which means that you, you, uh, you create a scenario where there is an election. And the government that will be elected will not consist of Gilani and Zardari. But I wanted to make another point, if I may please, and that is because somebody mentioned China, that interestingly, uh, the Chinese premier is making a visit to Saudi Arabia. And I think Saudi Arabians play a very important role in Pakistani politics, as the Chinese do. Is this, uh, is this just coincidental that the Chinese are going to Saudi now? Uh, Musharraf, before coming to Pakistan, which is due to come in two or three weeks if he does, uh, did visit Saudi also, as did uh, Nawaz when he was there for six years and they got clearances from Saudi Arabia and it was the pressure of the Saudis to get him back to Pakistan. So there is something happening which we don't know. And I really see that this government is not surviving the current crisis. What happens later is anyone's guess. Right, right. Fair point, fair point. So let me go to Pushpesh Pant really quickly. Uh, what about Zardari, the actual president of Pakistan in the middle of all this? He's off to Dubai. And, and, uh, you know, I think Zardari can remain in the margins. I think what Professor Jung is making a very interesting point once again, that Pakistan is not an island in itself. When we talk of Pakistan and Pakistan in crisis, let's turn our thoughts to China and Saudi Arabia also. Right, right, right. Uh, but Major General Dibaka Banerjee, same question to you, Zardari. Is he already thinking about life post a possible queue and another exile? I think that is inevitable as far as his future is concerned. But the future of Pakistan is the big question that should concern us. The lesson that we should draw from that is that uh, it, Pakistan is in turmoil. There will be a political, structural change within Pakistan in the near future. 
whatever happens there, you have to live with it. You have to live with it as a neighbor and develop a, a relationship that will address all outstanding problems, keeping in mind the enormous instabilities and the fragility of Pakistan. Right. I think we have still have one last time for one last word, which I'll give to Mr. Vinod Sharma. Very briefly, if you could, sir. What do, does India take away from the escalation in the crisis in Pakistan? Well, India has to watch the situation, as uh, Professor Jung says, and he's right that uh, there could be a soft coup, no, whether it'll be a soft coup or a judicial coup, uh, that's uh, anybody's choice to, uh, of expression. But I think that this government would be open to an election, an early election. Election is due in February 2013. They may have it by October, because in February there are elections to the Senate, and that will place this government in a majority in the Senate, and thereafter they would like to go for a snap poll. But short of that, there could be a leadership change in the existing house with Mr. Uh, Mr. Jilani stepping down. Uh, and because the government retains a majority in the house, well, the impeachment of the president may not be all Do you that think it's possible Zadari firing Gilani and getting someone else in this place? Yes, that's what I'm saying, a leadership change in the existing assembly. Yeah. Uh, that would be uh, short of uh, an election and sorry, short of a coup. Uh, but I will not write off the PPP because PPP remains a major political force mm -hmm. in that country. And even if it loses power, it shall have a substantial presence in the House. Yeah. And we'll have to see uh, which way uh, which way the tide turns because uh, uh, when a coalition government has to be formed, uh, the game is wide open. Right, right, right. I think, I think uh, there are some key takeaways from tonight's discussion. Uh, probabil the probability of a soft coup in Pakistan is one of them. Uh, what uh, my panelists called a judicial coup is also possible. I think uh, India will have to wait and watch uh, the game that's being played Pakistan in Pakistan. Pakistan seen a judicial murder earlier. Benazir Bhutto <laughs> used to call her, her father's hanging a judicial murder. You know. Right, right, right. So we, we, we'll end that pro, uh, program on that note. Uh, I think there are many key takeaways for that. Uh, the main one being watch out for a soft coup in Pakistan. Also, wait and watch and see what's happening in that country. I must thank all my guests, uh, Professor Pushpesh Pant, Major General Dipanga Banerjee, uh, Mr. Vinod Sharma, also Professor Najib Jung for joining us on the program. Till the next time when we get you another edition of The Big Picture with another important issue. It's goodbye, good night, and thank you for watching.